this rock cycle using chocolate. So you're going to need some white chocolate, some milk, milk chocolate. So you're going to need those from your science kit packs that I sent to you a few weeks ago. You'll need an option of some dark chocolate or some hundreds and thousands and sprinkles, but you don't need those, but you can add them in if you'd like to. You'll also need uh, a cheese grater, three small pots, um, and a piece of cling film or a, a plastic food bag. So you can either watch the video to see what I do and then have a go afterwards, or pause it and go and get those things ready and then come back. So you're going to need three small pots to grate your different types of chocolate in. So your white chocolate, your milk chocolate, and then optionally, if you're using it, the dark chocolate or the hundreds and thousands of sprinkles as well. So let's have a uh, get started with this. So you're just going to need to use a cheese grater. It doesn't have to be a tiny one like this, just to gently grate um, the chocolate into the pot. Do be careful because they are quite sharp. You don't want to grate your fingers. I'll move those out of the way and I'll just move the pots up here so that you can see the rest of what I'm doing. So I'm going to lay out my piece of cling film. Now you can follow this along with me uh, or do it afterwards. It's entirely up to you. And we're going to form our sedimentary rock first. So imagine this is the seabed and these are layers of dead plants and animals and bits of sand and silt forming and going down to the bottom of the sea. So we've got layers of different types of those things falling down. So mixing up the layers, some white chocolate, some milk chocolate to represent those different things forming in those layers on top of each other. And then what you need to do is you need to wrap up your, uh, your, your chocolate gratings really carefully. So we don't want them to fall out of the ends, but you do need to be able to undo the cling film afterwards as well. So make sure that you, you do it up so that you can still see that. Now the sedimentary rock is formed by the layers going on top of each other and then them being squashed. So what you want to do now is to squash it slightly, and push down on your layers uh, of sediment to try and compact them, squash them, um, and cement them together a little bit. And then you're going to need to carefully unwrap it. So you could, if you like, leave it to cool down um, and set harder uh, for a little bit first. But I'm just going to unwrap it and show you. Now sedimentary rock is often a bit crumbly. So it is squashed together, but you can see here that it crumbles quite easily. So there are bits of it, but if I, I move it about between my fingers, it does crumble into little bits. You can still see the different layers in this rock, but it does crumble a little bit. So it's a good idea now to either take a bit of this apart uh, to leave it to cool down, so you've got an example of that. Now I'm adding some dark chocolate here, which you can do all your sprinkles if you want to, because now we're going to turn it into metamorphic rock. So sometimes other minerals are, um, are joined in to this rock as it's made. Now metamorphic rock we're going to change by squashing it and applying more pressure, but also heat. So the temperature is increasing as well. And I'm going to use the temperature of my hands to warm up the chocolate and melt it a little bit. So metamorphic rock is, is made by um, more squashing, and warming it up a little bit. So temperature and pressure to change it from a sedimentary rock into a metamorphic rock. And then you carefully unwrap this. Again, if you've got time to do this, you might have to leave it to cool down and set a bit harder. So you can see this one is holding together more than the sedimentary rock. It's not so crumbly, and if I left it to cool down, it would be harder as well. I can still break it apart a little bit, um, and you can still see the different colours uh, mixed up together as well. So those different layers are still there, but it's a harder rock, not quite so crumbly. So you might want to put a piece of this one to one side as your metamorphic rock to have a look at later. And now we're going to change it into igneous rock. So the one that's made from fire, so we're going to warm it up. And I'm going to use uh, half a cup of tea so it's not what well, you can just use warm water. It's not boiling water because um, 
we don't want to use anything that hot, it could be a little bit dangerous. And you're just going to dunk it into the water to warm up and melt for a little while. So igneous rock is formed from the, the hot magma, the molten rock from the heat deep down inside the earth. And it's going to melt our chocolate because it's warm. I'm just going to take that out and I'm going to give it a dry off because it's a little bit soggy. So the igneous rock has been heated, so using our warm water, it's been, it's been uh, heated up and melted. And again, if you could leave this to cool down before you open it up, you'll find that it's, it solidifies into a harder chocolate rock. But I'm just going to open it up to show you that it's very sticky and melted, isn't it? This is why we're doing it in cling film and not just on our hands. Uh, that the layers have merged all in together. You can't see those distinct layers anymore. It's all melted and become something different. So you can still see bits of the different colours in there, but it's sort of more of one uh, homogenous block. So we're going to leave that to cool down and have a look at the different types of rock that we've created. So if you remember, we've got three different types. The first one we made was the sedimentary rock, the one that was made by layers of sediment falling on top of each other, and then we compacted them a little bit, squashed them together. And it was a little bit crumbly, uh, but we could still see the layers, the lines of the white and the dark, or the, sorry, the white and the milk chocolate. And sometimes the sedimentary rock has fossils in it because as the plants and animals and the sand and the silt fall down on those layers, uh, fall down, sometimes fossils of those, those living things uh, are left behind. The next rock that we made was our metamorphic rock, our changed rock. Now, you might have added some optional dark chocolate or your hundreds and thousands of sprinkles, but it doesn't matter if not. Sometimes different minerals are added into metamorphic rocks and you can see different grains in them, but not always. The rock is changed by the pressure and the heat deep down in the earth. So we warmed it in our hands and squashed it even further. We could still see the layers that we'd built up in the sedimentary rock, uh, but it wasn't so crumbly, was it? And then the third type of rock that you made, the igneous rock, was the melted rock. So it's formed from this cooled magma. Now, we just melted chocolate, didn't we? Now, you could see the crystals perhaps in it um, from the, the, if you put hundreds and thousands into yours. Sometimes there's air bubbles or a kind of a shiny glassy surface formed as the igneous rock cools down. Sometimes they're really hard as well. So maybe did your melted rock, when you lift it, left it to cool down, did it set hard, your melted chocolate? You couldn't see the layers so much anymore. It was all kind of mushed up together. So your rocks might look a little bit like this. We've got the sedimentary rock, the crumbly rock where you can see the different layers. We've got the metamorphic rock in the middle that we changed by applying more pressure and heat between our hands. And the igneous rock, which we melted inside the warm water uh, and it became a sort of a, a melted mass of those different chocolates all mixed up together. And this is a really useful way of looking at how these different rocks are formed and looking at the different properties. And if you're allowed to, you get to eat them at the end.